Hi everyone, today we are going to study from chapter 6 lines and angles. Exercise 6.2 question 6. In figure PQ and RS are two mirrors placed parallel to each other. An incident ray AB strikes the mirror PQ and B. The reflected ray moves along the path BC and strikes the mirror RS at C and again reflects back along CD. Prove that AB is parallel to CD. So let me explain to you with the figure that is given to us. So it is said this PQ what you see red line. This is the mirror. PQ is a mirror and RS is another mirror. And what it is said they are placed parallel to each other. So these two mirrors are parallel to each other. Meaning to say PQ is parallel to RS. Now Incident ray AB is coming. Okay. Incident ray. So that is this. A ray is falling. Okay. So this is A. This is A. This is an incident ray. So a ray is falling on the mirror here at point B. Okay. So a ray is falling at point B. It is striking the mirror PQ at this point it is striking and then it is reflecting back. It is reflecting. Okay. It goes like this. Strikes the mirror PQ at this point and then reflects back. So it reflects back and then strikes at this point in this mirror. This is another mirror. RS is the another mirror. So first is AB falls on this PQ and reflects back and falls at this point on the another mirror point at this point C. It is striking at point C. So it is falling on this. Then again it is reflecting back. Okay. Again it is reflecting back at point D. Okay. This is the figure given to us. So PQ and RS two mirrors are there. They are parallel to each other. A ray is falling and striking the mirror PQ at point B and reflects back and striking here again reflects back. Okay. So now what we have to prove, we have to prove in the question AB is parallel to CD. This AB, what we see, this AB is parallel to CD. This is what we have to prove. So I am just going to highlight that. So I'll just highlight this once again because this is what we have to prove. That these two are parallel. Okay. So AB is parallel to CD. This is what we have to prove. So for that, first of all, let us write down. Let us draw BE. Okay. Let us draw B E perpendicular to P Q and C F perpendicular to R S. I'll just explain to you. I'm going to draw B E. So this P Q and R S they are parallel. So we are going to draw B E from here from this point B. One line perpendicular line perpendicular to okay this is perpendicular to PQ so PQ is straight here and this is perpendicular line okay this we name it as E so BE okay same way from C we will draw perpendicular to RS RS is straight and when we draw perpendicular line becomes perpendicular RS okay so I'll draw perpendicular to this is F. Okay. So we have drawn BE perpendicular to PQ and CF perpendicular to RS. So now when you draw these, some angle is formed here. Here angle is formed, right? Here also angle is formed. Same way here also angle is formed. Here also angle is formed. So in physics, we have studied that by laws of reflection. Okay. By laws of reflection, we know that angle, 
angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection. Okay, in physics we study by laws of reflection. Now when you study, we come to know that angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection. So that means this is the angle of incident. AB is incident because it is falling. Then from here it is reflecting that. So what we said angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection. So this is the angle of incident. So let us name it 1. So that is equal to angle of reflection. So 1 is equal to 2. So same way now this is this becomes incident here. This is falling here. So this angle becomes incident. This will become equal to the reflection. So this side. So that means angle 1 will be equal to angle 2 and angle 3 will be equal to angle 4. So, so we can say angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So we can say angle 1 is equal to angle 2 and angle 3 is equal to angle 4. Is that clear? Okay. So now since, since we know that PQ is parallel to rs okay we know that pq is parallel to rs so we can say that be is parallel to cf this blue line we drawn a perpendicular so be also will be parallel to cf then be also will be parallel to cf okay so now with this what we come to know so if these two are parallel See, since PQ is parallel to RS, then BE also will be parallel to CF. So, with that what we come to know? We come to know that, I will just rotate this for your sake. Okay, I am rotating this. So, now if you can see here, this blue line. So, if I extend this, these two are parallel. Okay, if they are parallel, this becomes a transversal. So, when this becomes transversal, these two are parallel means these are inside these two angles are inside angle 2 and 3 they are inside the parallel line so if you extend this line extend like this this two becomes a parallel line and this becomes a transversal so this angle 2 and angle 3 inside the parallel line then they are opposite to each other so can we say this angle 2 is equal to angle 3 because they are alternate interior angles Introduction, please go through alternate interior angle I have explained to you. Okay. So now can we say angle 2 is equal to angle 3? So angle 2 is equal to angle 3. Why? Because they are alternate interior angles. And I told you alternate interior angles are equal to each other. When lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are equal to each other. So, already we said that angle 1 is equal to angle 2. Angle 3 is equal to angle 4. Now we are saying angle 2 is equal to angle 3 because they are alternate interior angle. So, if this is equal to this and this is equal to this means then all are equal to each other. So, can we say angle 1 is equal to angle 2 and angle 2 is equal to angle 3 and angle 3 is equal to angle 4. So, all angles are equal to each other. Okay. So, now we also can say angle 1 plus angle 2 will be equal to angle 3 plus angle 4. This way also we can say because both are equal to each other. So, 1 plus 2 together it will be equal to 3 plus 4 together. So, both 1 to this whole thing will become now whole thing will become equal to this angle. So, both the angle will become together. So, 1 plus 2 is what actually angle A, B, C and then this angle is what actually S, S, C, B. Okay. Here it is. Okay, 1 plus 2 becomes A, B, C and then 3 plus 4 becomes, you can write like this also, B, C, D. This whole angle, right? So, this doesn't come because we are not counting this part of it, okay? So, we are counting only this. So, angle 1 plus 2 will be angle A, B, C 
and 3 plus 4 this angle will be B C D so 1 plus 2 is angle A B C and 3 plus 4 is angle B C D so now if look at this angle so now this whole thing is equal to this thing so now if you look at this then look here they becomes alternate interior angle because see they become alternate interior angle because BC becomes the transversal so 1 plus 2 will be equal to 3 plus 4 means then they become alternate interior angle so if they are same then then we said when alternate interior angles are equal then the line is parallel so if these are alternate interior angle then this AB and CD has to be parallel only I hope you are understanding see this is your AB okay and this is your CD okay AB and CD so this becomes your transverse that is BC okay this is AB I wrote okay BC okay BC BC this becomes the transverse so BC become transverse then we say this angle and this angle alternate interior angle they become so alternate interior angle if they become then what is this a b and c d then it has to be parallel only so we prove that this is alternate interior angles so alternate interior angles are equal when they are equal when the line is parallel so if these two angles 1 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 plus 4 means they becomes alternate interior angle and when alternate in interior angles are equal when the line is parallel so that means AB has to be parallel to CD then only these two angle becomes alternate interior angle therefore AB is parallel to CD hence proof that's it thank you God bless you.